Hello then, here we are, we're at uh, BMW Ocean Motorrad, going to look at the new F800 GS, which has just come in as a demonstrator for them. Really nice looking bike, isn't it? Now this is a factory lowered uh, sus uh, chassis, suspension, whatever they do at the factory, and it's also got the uh, lowered extra lowered seat on it so it could be a bit of a nightmare for me to ride but looks really nice it reminds me of my 850 GS GSA same so the same engine just been had magic done to it and uh, it looks pretty nice actually I like the color scheme so first impressions as the lowered bike this is really quite small but it's still quite tall, the bike itself. The seat is really low. Um, oh gosh, and they fell over then. In fact, it's so low and they got cramp in the hip. Oh, look at that bike there in front of us. It's, uh, it's my bike. So this is quite a basic bike, I would say. In as much as it's, uh, it's it's not got many bells and whistles on it, it's small. So I'm uh, five foot ten, and the bike is lowered, got lowered suspension, all that old malarkey. It does feel a little bit cramped for me, but. I've seen the 800 in its st standard spec and that is, uh, would be an ideal bike, it's just the same sort of frame size as uh, the 850 GSA I used to have and that was a really comfortable riding position. So one thing that's instantly obvious on this bike is how light it is. Not really sure of the specs, but we'll put them up at the side of the screen what the actual specs of it are. But it feels really light, it feels really fl flickable, and uh, I quite like it. Issue for me straight away is the screen. Now, you can get an aftermarket screen, I believe, um, that's a bit bigger than that one. I just don't feel I'm getting any protection from it. I'm, not get, I'm only doing 34 miles an hour, we're going through Falmouth, but there's not really much wind, but I think in, in the rain you might get a bit of rain from it, but the shape of the tank does give you some protection for your thighs and your legs um, from uh, wind and rain. I was really surprised on my old, the, the baby GSA I used to have, really surprised how much weather protection you got from that. I um, I, uh, I think that was actually slightly better than my, my GSA 1200 which seems a bit weird. However, this is really quite nice and something I've noticed you don't get much dive on it. Toby's in front of me there and he was just obviously demonstrating how much dive there is on that bike. It gets a bit of bit of you getting used to once you've done the um, when you've had a GSA. It's got the telelever suspension. Uh, trying to work out, you know, sort out your braking so you're not diving at the front all the time. But it's um, once you get used to it. And this this engine, I found that on the 850, you really had to rag it quite a bit. So standard switch gear, there's nothing flashy about this, there's no adjustable suspension, you've got a little bit of um, damping you can do on the rear, everything is manual. Standard uh, TFT screen, it's rigged with a sat nav that's on the centre of the handlebars which I personally don't like, I like to have the uh, sat nav somewhere up a bit higher and I don't know if you can actually do that on this particular bike. Heated grips, it's got three uh, positions on it, I've got it on three at the moment. The first thing you recognise after coming off some like a GS, uh, a GSA a 1250 or a 1200 is the, uh, it's ride by wire, 
Uh, so, so it's it's actual proper cables, you know, for the clutch and the accelerator, and that always feels a little bit jerky to get till you get used to it. It's not as smooth as the uh, as the fly-by-wire versions that have come in other bikes. Standard mirrors, BMW mirrors, which are pretty good. You can adjust them pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't mind them at all. Some people complain about them. You can get aftermarket things for everything now, can't you? You can get mirror extenders and all sorts. This comes with a, uh, a USB point, which is down here to the right of the TFT screen. There's no point going through the TFT screen because it's just a standard BMW screen. It's not been updated or anything. I will say one thing, though. The engine sounds lovely when it's just poodling along. It does sound quite growly. And it's going to start raining. And good engine braking on it. So like I say, the, the lowered suspension, you'd have to be really short to want to, to have to have this bike. I mean, I'm quite happy to put one foot down um, when I stop it somewhere if I can. And I don't mind necessarily being on a bit of a tiptoe sometimes on some bikes. But this is a nice light bike, so I think one foot is acceptable. On the, this lowered suspension, I do feel a little bit squeezed in, you know. Um, but it's okay. I couldn't ride this, but when we were talking to the, to the uh, sales team, they were saying, oh, you know, It'd be a great commuting bike, and it would actually be a fantastic commuting commuting bike. It's nice and small, you know. I'm sure you'll get good miles per gallon out of it. Uh, as an example, my baby GSA did. Uh, I think I was getting an average of about 60, 64 miles to the gallon out of it, and then when I was on tour, I got phenomenal miles. It was up to 90 miles at one point. So I would imagine this for commuting this is an excellent bike you know it's got keyless start uh, this comes with data tag all that sort of stuff on it um, the seat is even though it's quite low it is remarkably comfortable if I compare it to the seat on the uh, on the 850 and the 900 it's um, it's com a bit comfier actually. I found on my baby GS that the seat was a bit of an issue sometimes until you really got used to it. And I'm, it took me a, a good while, you know, it took in sort of five, six months of riding it to get used to it. When it comes to the actual riding modes, we have road, and rain and that's it so you only get two choices of um, ride mode it's got an S the SOS button is uh, I think for standard for a lot of bikes now from BMW on the other side uh, on the left hand switch gear you've got uh, traction control traction control it's on or off and it's on and that's good there's no suspension Standard menu, horn, it has got cruise control, which on quite a lot of bikes like this, they don't fit that, which I think is a, you know, you're losing a bit there, you only have to fit a, a throttle lock or something like that, why can't you just put a cruise control on it? And I use my cruise control on all my bikes down to 30 miles an hour, so even just poodling around in town, they're really good. So uh, I... I I think it should be a pretty much a standard fit. You wouldn't expect a car not to have cruise control nowadays, would you? But I must say that it does want to go up in its gears, and that's probably because I'm listening to the engine tone while talking to you and thinking, oh, it should be up in a gear, but it doesn't need to. I mean, it's doing, we're doing 30 miles an hour, and it's just under 3,000 RPM, and the red line doesn't come on till eight and a half, thousand so the power band is somewhere between three and a half and five I would imagine somewhere like that so it's actually just poodling along it's not struggling at all 
that's the concept you have with a bike isn't it in a car you want to go up through the gears as quick as you can in a bike it works better if you actually keep the gears low so you can drive around bends and uh, have you know lots of engine braking oh just going around into falmouth bay and uh, it's going to start hoofing it down on us look at that a few white horses out there So, I like it actually, I, I don't think I'd want to tour on it necessarily, but you can tour, you could tour on any bike. If I was uh, coming back to biking, this would be an ideal first bike I think, even though it's, a, it's a, an 800 and you know, it's quite a large capacity engine, the, uh, it would be an ideal first bike to get back into biking I think. And it's, you know, it's, it's good enough for most riders, are, you know, it's not going light, to light up the, uh, the sky, but it's not going to disappoint you either. And if we're honest, you know, all the bikes we ride, you know, 135 brake horsepower, how much of that do you actually use? And if you're commuting, you know, how much of that is actually going to be used at all? Is it going to be just in, you know, doing 30, 40 miles an hour, poodling along? This is just no effort at all for it. Hola, buenos dias, buenos noches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freezing and I'm wet, oh. moist. Is that a word? Can we use that word? I don't know. Look what we're looking at here. What have we got? This is the uh, new F800 by BMW. Oh, GS. GS. Mm. Says it there, doesn't it? Yeah. Somewhere. How cool is this? Actually, it looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit basic, but it's a really nice bike, and this is a factory lowered and the lowest seat you can get, so I felt a bit squashed up on it, but it's a really nice bike. We we're, were chatting before we left about what you would use this for. It's a great little commuter, I think. You could tour on it easy. Definitely tour on it. Um, it's just a nice bike. Really nice. And you know what? I think you could even green lane it. You could put some knobby tyres on it. Well, it's, it's got quite a lot of clearance at the bottom, isn't it? It's really light. It is really light. Really liked it. Um, things to talk about. Basic, basic. Comes with a sat-nav preparation on it that's on the headstock. Same old switch gear for BMW. Engine is really, really quite smooth. But the sound is really nice. It's just got a, the... Um, BMW exhaust on it which makes it gives us this, this little burble I was talking about my 850 I had mm -hmm. same sort of exhaust the noise is just really nice and I like that does Tf it feel does it feel like your 850 it does but in a smaller version okay if you if you say it's nice and slim and that's why I think it'd be a cracking commuter um I don't really like the screen it's quite a small screen it's isn't a it? really small screen I believe you'd be able to get an aftermarket one because I didn't get any wind necessarily from it. Yeah. Um, but I think the rain will obviously because it's just coming straight in at you, you know, so you're going to get wet. But nice little well, beak on it. Even more moist. Even more moist, yeah, yeah. Which is not probably a good thing. The seat, although it's lowered and it's like, you know, it's had a lot of stuff taken out of it, it was very comfortable. And yeah, you can tour on it. Standard BMW mirrors and all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't have any fantastic bells and whistles on it. There's no electronic suspension. Uh, there's only two riding modes, rain or or uh, road. It's keyless start. But it's weird though, isn't it? Because when you think about the history of bikes and us saying there's no bells and whistles on it, it's really basic. People like that though. Yeah, but the bikes that we call basic now are really advanced from what they were years ago. The yeah. technology that's in the engines, even the ABS, you know, all the braking systems, they far exceed anything years and years ago, don't they? It's really strange how, as humans, we say, this yeah. is a really basic yeah. bike, but in actual fact, the technology that's gone into it is just as basic as a brand new GSA top of the line, isn't it? Yeah. So you can see it's quite a long bike, I think. Uh, it reminds me very much like the... 
with the one pipe that's coming out the front of a almost like a Suzuki SV650 because oh, yeah. there's a lot of gap in between the tyres. Yeah. And then the back seems to remind me a little bit about um, a V-Strom because of the frame and the, the six, way that it's the six, six, 660 or 650 is yeah. V-Strom, yeah, the baby V-Strom. Comes with Maxxis tyres. Now, I try to get older Maxxis because they get quite a good write-up on their tyres, but they didn't get back to us, so it'd be nice if Ooh. we could do that. But the tyres were quite nice. They were... The ride is a bit hard, hmm. but you know I'm no I am no expert. I couldn't possibly set the suspension. But if somebody said this is the bike you ride because this is it, I'd just go yeah okay that's fine. If it's got electronics on it where you can adjust the suspension, then I might I am brave enough to go oh, I'll set it to auto and <laughs> let it do what yeah. it wants. But it just does fine. This is the same seat that I think was on the uh, the old um, eight eight fifty, and you'll notice it is. Measurement uh, coming up. Nine and a half inches wide. So it's a nice wide seat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it'd be much fun to have a pillion on here for any length of time. Mainly because the bike's to be enjoyed by one person. I mean, um, but yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get a top box on there, I'm sure. Yeah. And I'm sure you can get aftermarket stuff. Well, and you can get luggage as well, can't you? Because it looks like these are the, like the Vario hangers. Uh, yeah. Although you've got they the didn't mention that to us, so no. the Vario luggage is quite quite bulky out here, so it'd be ideal for an individual touring on it, definitely. Uh, not so much for a, a a pair of people, but it's just a nice bike, and, yeah. it, and it goes. It's quite quite swift. Uh, I was really quite pleased with it. And things like the um, the handguards and stuff—they're exactly the same handguards that are on the GS. Yes. Aren't they? No, I said about you You might want to go green lane. It doesn't come with a belly pan or anything like that, so you'd have to fit, retrofit that. But, you know, if, I think if you were doing a back-to-bike, you know, you are just getting back into biking, this would be a cracking bike to do it on. Yeah. Well, it might be that this fits into um, riding school type bikes. Yep, yep. And I was trying to... You were talking about what bike you thought it looked like. And I was thinking it looks like a, the BMW 310 on steroids. Yeah, it does actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a nice little bike. Yeah. Cracking little bike. So, yeah, that's it. Going to get one? Uh, no. <laughs> Did I have to think about that then? No, it doesn't tick any of the boxes that I need ticking. Hmm. But It like, will tick boxes for somebody who's looking for a cheaper bike that's got enough power, that's comfortable, that can do everything. It will fit somebody a, a treat, won't it? I, I It's not meant to sound as a sexist comment, but I think a lot of ladies like might, might like this type mm. of bike, only because of the height thing. Yeah. Um, and this is the factory lowered one, so... And it's quite funny, isn't it? Because as bikers, most bikers will be... I want the best of the best of the best all the time. And in actual fact, you haven't got to get the best of the best because if you buy the top of the range 1300, there's things you've got to compromise to fit on the bike. Oh, yeah. You definitely. could save some money, fit all the stuff you want to fit on this one, and be just as happy. It's an awesome bike. It'll tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Not for me, unfortunately, but it is a cracking bike. So it's going to start raining now, really heavy. It's hailing. <laughs> and I haven't got a hat. So give us a See them up. bouncing off his head. All the, all the details will be on here somewhere. And um, come and have a ride of this because you'll be really impressed by it.